Good evening, Primetime Squad. How is everybody doing this evening? Man, y'all just don't know what type of day I had. Let me, I need to... Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all have no idea what kind of day I had. Um, we are experiencing right now, uh, probably is what is going to become to be known one of the worst blizzards in our city. It is so bad outside. I don't know if y'all seen the thumbnail, but if you've seen the thumbnail on my uh, video... That was the front of my job where I work part-time. <clears throat> that was looking out from the lobby. I was supposed to be at work till, what time is it? It's 8 p.m. It's 8.08 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I was supposed to be out um, at like 8.30 p.m., but they had um, given us a report as far as the weather that around 3 o'clock p.m. It was going to start, you know, getting bad because we had, like, ice last night. Rain that froze, and it was nothing but a sheet of ice this morning. <clears throat> Thank God I didn't have to go anywhere. But then this afternoon, when it was time for me to go in for my shift, which started at 4, um... It was coming down. It was, you know, it was coming down. The snow was, like, heavy, and it was really freezing. Like, it felt like ice snow. Man, within, like, an hour, I swear, look at that thumbnail again when you get a chance. <laughs> I swear we had inches of snow within an hour. And so I called my supervisor. I was like, I'm shutting this nursing home down. Ain't nobody coming out. I'm about to leave. <laughs> they was like okay you know just drive safe i mean it's really really bad here y'all what normally takes me 10 minutes to get home took me an hour and five minutes to get home a 10 minute drive like the power was out everywhere you can't see i mean it's blizzardous conditions is drifts everywhere because you know it's the wind is blowing and you can't see the curbs, you can't see the lanes, you can't see the cars. It's really bad here, y'all. So when I got home tonight, after that hour drive, that should have took 10 minutes, I kissed the ground. I was thanking God all the way home. Yes, I made it home. Because there was cars stopped everywhere. Wrecks, SUVs stuck. I mean, it's. I was just praying the whole way home. Like, Lord, please help me get home, help me get home, help me get home, help me get home. So anyway, I'm home. I'm safe and sound. <laughs> I'm like, y'all understand how happy I am to be in my house. Like, it's really bad out there. And I posted on Facebook for all my friends and family. If y'all don't have to go out, do not go outside. I mean, everything on the way home, everything was closed. Gas stations, grocery stores, restaurants, McDonald's, everything shut down. It's, it's, it's bad out there. But um, anywho... Anywho, I just want to get y'all tell y'all that little bit of information because I know some of y'all follow me on Facebook and I was talking about how bad it was on the ride home, so I am okay. And hopefully everybody else, if you are having bad weather wherever you are, I hope that you are safe, warm, and dry. I really do. But um, if you read the title of this video, <laughs> um, it's called Have You or somebody you know of ever has CPS called on you for false child abuse allegations. Now, normally, this wouldn't be a topic I might discuss on my channel, because I normally do, if y'all been following me on this channel and my other channel, which is Tanya's Primetime TV, uh... This is my live channel, my Tanya's Live Primetime uh, TV Media Reviews. But I have another YouTube channel. Um, it's just Tanya's Primetime TV. So um, anyway, so please sub to that other channel as well because sometimes I upload different stuff on different channels, you know. But um, at, matter of fact, I'll put the link in there just in case you guys want to... 
sub to my other channel. It's Tanya's Prime. It's basically the same name as this channel. It just don't have the live in the name. So it's the same exact name of this channel. It's just the word live is not in my other uh, YouTube channel. But I'm going to put the link on here anyway for those of you who might want to um, subscribe to that other channel. Uh, but again, uh, I normally don't talk about things like this um, unless maybe possibly it was something in the news, something that happened, you know, trending news or whatnot. But for most of y'all, hi, Ann. How you doing? Uh, are you at home? Please tell me you at home because I just came from outside and it's, it's bad. It's bad. I haven't never seen it like that in years. It's really bad. So I hope that you are at home and I hope that you are safe. Um, I hope everybody in Omaha is safe because it's really bad out there. Okay, you at home? All right, cool. Okay, but yeah, um, the reason why I wanted to do this live review tonight was because I happened to be on somebody else's YouTube channel earlier. And I don't know how many of y'all might follow Sean Bradley, but, um, or even care for his channel or not. But regardless if you do or not, um, I happened to be on his channel earlier and he showed us, um, okay, CPS was called to his house and it was, I guess it was for child abuse, you know, child endangerment, you know, something like that. And he has cameras, you know, all through his house. Like most people nowadays, they have cameras all through their house. He has cameras, you know, um, on his doorbell. So you can see, you know, on your porch and you can do all this from your phone. You know how modern technology is. Some of y'all probably got the same setup in your home and you can see what's going on at your home when you're not even at home. Um, but he happened to be home and he showed us on his phone, uh, the CPS, you know, a couple of ladies came to his house. Um, he asked, who is it? They said CPS, Child Protective Services. And he, um, asked them to show ID because just because somebody say you, um, from CPS or, you know, the authorities, you just don't let them in your house. You know, you... <laughs> you you know you still should use precaution you know if they are knocking on your door and that's just like uh a couple of weeks ago when there was a murder you know a couple of houses down it was a, a drive-by and a, a man got shot a man got killed and a lady got shot um she was in the hospital matter of fact i don't even know if she survived or if she's still in the hospital i don't know but the police came knocking on my door at like 1.30 in the morning. I'm like, looking outside, what y'all want? Uh, we want to ask you about the shooting. Um, excuse me, can I see your badge? The man took out his badge and he took out his flashlight and he showed, you know, the flashlight on him. Because it was dark and he showed the flashlight on him. And I'm like, I ain't seen shit. <laughs> I shut the blind. I was like, <laughs> even though I didn't see anything and I wasn't even home when it happened, um, my kids were, but they didn't see anything. One of them was asleep, the other one was playing video games. So, you know, we didn't see anything, but you don't never know who it is. It could be somebody, you know, pretending to be a cop or a CPS or whatever. But anyway, anyway, somebody called the cops on him. I, and, well, called CPS on him and reported that he was, uh, you know, um, either abusing his children or, you know, the children weren't safe with him. And mind you, he is a foster parent. So he has several foster parents, foster kids, and he's been a foster parent for a minute. And um, most people who's been following him knows that, you know, he's a foster parent. And I myself... You know, just from what I know, I don't know him personally, but I myself, just from what I've seen over the months that I've been following his channel, he seems to be a pretty decent guy. 
Um, especially when it comes to, to children, the children he take care of, he's always talking about them. He's always doing things for them, things out of the scope of what he has to do. I mean, as a foster parent, as any parent, really, I mean, I tell my kids all the time, by law, I'm supposed to love you, feed you, clothe you, house you, make sure you get to school. That's it. <laughs> And of course, I do way more than that. I mean, most people who know me personally, they think my kids are spoiled. And they ain't spoiled at all. They is not spoiled. Trust me. They is not spoiled. I'm not rich. I, I can't spoil them. You know, we ain't rich. We ain't poor. You know, we do okay. But they not spoiled. But some people think, oh, they always got the most expensive shoes on. And they do this. And they do that. And No, they not spoiled. We good. We good. But I always tell them all the time, that extra stuff that parents do for y'all, those $200 tennis shoes, those sneakers, we ain't got to do that. We can get you some $9.99 shoes from Payless and the law won't say nothing. We could get all your clothes from the Goodwill, from the thrift store, from a hand-me-down store, from your cousin's uh, hand-me-down at their house. We can get your clothes from any of those places, and the law won't say nothing. I can feed you rice and hot dogs and or chicken and rice and bread every day of the week, and the law won't say nothing. You know what I mean? As long as they are happy and safe, the law won't say nothing. All this extra stuff that y'all get, y'all don't have to get it. You you earn that stuff. That's thing, those are things that you earn, and that's why my kids get certain things, and I'm sure y'all kids, y'all probably raise y'all kids the same way. You get what you earn, you know? But anyway, anyway, back to uh, SB. Uh, he opened the door and he let CPS in and his live started off on his live YouTube channel, um, YouTube video started off with him just, you know, explaining to us, you know, the CPS coming out and somebody then called on him, made some false allegations and I guess they came out, they probably looked around, talked to him, maybe talked to the kids, I don't know, but everything went perfect. Um, they didn't find any reason that anybody in his household is being abused or anything like that. But I thought it was really, really messed up that somebody would do something like that. Um, he's even had, you know, some of his foster kids, like the grown ones, you know, cause some of his foster kids are still grown. I mean, they still live with him, but they grown. They up to the age where he could be like, bye. I done done my responsibility to society. I done helped a child that somebody else couldn't take care of. And now that you're old enough and you can go on about your business, good luck to you. You know, probably hand them a few dollars. You know, here's, you know, bus ticket. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Once a child gets so old in the system and you're a foster parent, you don't have to keep taking care of them. But he be having kids in his home that are grown that he still take care of. Of course, you know, um, he tries to get them to uh, go to college or go to the service or get a job. You know, they just ain't sitting around his crib eating up snacks and, you know, drinking up all the Kool-Aid and playing video games all day. You know what I mean. But uh, he seemed like a very good guy as far as foster parenting. I don't know every angle of his life. I have not spent one day with him, not have spoke to him on the phone. All I see is what, you know, um, comes across the YouTube screens, you know, every day when he makes up, makes a video. But I think it's like really, really messed up. And he eventually started taking phone calls on the live and other people were calling in and the stories, I mean, I was in tears. If y'all didn't watch that video, y'all make sure y'all check out Sean Bradley's video later. Um, he uploaded it a few hours ago. And I was in tears. This one lady called, and her daughter is dealing with CPS right now, all because her ex 
her baby's father um, basically hates her guts because he don't want to be with her. He was abusive. She left him. And now he keeps running to the cops and running to CPS saying that she's abusing the kids and not feeding them. So they keep coming to her house, you know, unexpectedly. Um, he even lied and said that she put a gun um, on him or pulled a gun out on somebody. And she has a license to carry concealed weapon. Never been in trouble with the law. She had to turn over her gun. She can no use it, longer use a gun. He lied and said he was fearful for his life. You know, so fearful for his life. All this just to hurt her, even though he has kids by her. And then he's trying to take, you know, the kids because she has like kid by him. Then she has like kids by somebody else. And he trying to take the kid that belonged to him. But he really don't want the kid. He just really wants to hurt her. And the mother of the daughter, well, you know, the young lady who's going through all this stuff with CPS and her ex, her mom is the one who called in to the live. And she was on the phone. She was like, Sean, I understand what you're going through. I appreciate you doing what you're doing with the foster kids. And, you know, I feel so bad for you because I can't do anything to help my daughter. I can't do anything to help my daughter. Like once people start calling on you and making those false allegations, even if they don't stick, even if they come to find out that you are the best parent in the whole world and your children are so taken care of and don't have to worry for nothing, they don't get beat. They don't even get spankings. They don't, you know, they get three, four, five meals a day, snacks in between. Um... That still is like a hit on you from the CPS department. So sometimes, even though it don't stick, they still might come back around or they still might keep you in the system for a while. Okay, well, we're, you know, we don't have to keep checking up on this or we might have to, you know, investigate a little further or, you know. And I think it's so messed up for people to do that. And I've known people here in Omaha who've done that before, you know, there are stories that I know of from way back, nothing recent, you know, way back, like way back, probably when I was a young mother, you know, that far back. But I knew friends who had CPS called on them and I knew they weren't abusive parents, friends that I grew up with, friends that I was close to. I knew they weren't, you know, abusive to their kids or starve their kids or anything like that. I think it's really messed up that somebody would go that low just to hurt you. Just to hurt you because even though you might be trying to hurt that parent, you're not just hurting that parent. you hurting that child. And let's say CPS actually believes the allegations or they keep calling and calling and making allegations. I mean, eventually if they don't stop it, because, you know, if you keep making false allegations on CPS, that's just like doing a Jussie Smollett. Y'all see that side eye? That's like doing a Jussie Smollett. You calling the cops, making false allegations. You can get in trouble for that. Like, you can get in trouble for that. You can go to jail for that. So if they don't stop it that way by the person being punished and CPS keeps coming out to your home or whatnot, and let's say you eventually lose, lose your kids, where are they going to go? Is the person making these false allegations going to raise them? Are they going to take care of them? No. No. <laughs> what What's going to most likely happen if they don't have any close family grandparents or you know a father in the picture they gonna go into the system where they don't belong you said there should be a law against people making false words on people and, and it is it is i don't know what the stipulations are annie i don't know what the stipulations are um i don't know if if uh if it's if you get like one strike or any strikes or if you get any warnings or if it's just automatic you know you can go to jail or go to court or whatever you know have a warrant out for your arrest i don't know exactly how it go but i do know that it's against the law to make foul to make false um cps allegations 
I just don't know what the stipulations are or what the punishment is. Um, but I do know that you can be punished for something like that. And so while people are out there trying to hurt other people, other innocent people, the children who are innocent are getting hurt in the process. And, um, I ain't never been in a foster home. I know there's good ones. I know there's bad ones. And I know there's horrible ones. You don't never know which one this kid is going to land up in. They can end up with a good parent, like their own parent. Or they could end up with a okay parent who kind of like, you know, they want to take care of kids, but they really don't like kids. But they want to check. And so they want to take care of a kid. And they're going to do ba the basics. You know, the basics. Make sure they get to school. Make sure they eat. Make sure, you know, they got clothes on their back. You know, the basics to get that check. And then you have the horrible ones who are abusive mentally, physically, and every other Lee. <laughs> every other Lee. Um, you don't ever know where the children are going to end up. You, you, I can't imagine a person having a heart who would make false allegations on somebody's parents who are good parents to punish the parent because you have to be you, you you have to think about the children like what are going to happen to the children they could end up somewhere abused they could end up somewhere killed uh neglected they could never see their parent again i mean these are all things people who have done these things before or have thought about doing these things to someone you need to think about that. Do you even have kids? Do you have your own kids? If you have your own kids and you really love kids, like I really love kids. I have kids over my house a lot during like the, you know, the warm months and the summertime. <clears throat> In the summertime when my kids were younger, man, you would have thought I ran a daycare. You would have thought I ran a daycare because every day, I swear, sometimes, <laughs> and it's funny now, but <laughs> sometimes I would go home and after picking up my kids from school or, you know, daycare or wherever they was at, games, practices, whatever, and we would come home and it would be kids sitting on the curb, sitting on our porch. <laughs> With their bikes in our yard, they basketballs in their hand, and they waiting on us to get home. Because they know this is the house where all the kids can come and play. If they wasn't playing football in the backyard, they was riding their bikes, or they was playing basketball on our basketball hoop. Um, they loved my sons. They had my sons have friends that they've been friends with forever. So everybody like latches on to us, no matter no matter what neighborhood we live in. Um, and although I'm one of those strict type of parents, not overly strict, but strict enough to where I demand respect and that's the bottom line. I ain't gotta beat you. I ain't gotta knock you over the head. I, but I'm just one of those parents who just I, 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 you going any everything you get from me, you're going to earn it. Everything out of, you know, out of the normal stuff you give kids. You know what I mean? Out of the normal stuff. But, uh, yeah, you work for everything you earn. You got chores, you know, y'all might switch up on the dishes one week, switch up on the trash, you know, you know, chores, uh, well-behaved, well-behaved boys. Um, but I have strict rules. You're going to do your homework. You're going to clean your room. You're going to do your chores. Or you're not doing this. No phone, no TV, no game, no going to a game, no going to your friends. You know, I wasn't one of those parents who, okay, you didn't do your chores. But, yeah, sure, go ahead. Have fun. Nope. <laughs> we have rules <laughs> in our household. And although I might be a little more, um, or some kids' parents might be a little more lenient, and don't make their kids do chores or don't make them uh, do their homework. You know, they still like, this the cool mom. This the cool house. Because, 
you know, I said before on another live, even when you have children um, and you're the parent, even though you, you, you want to be strict and you want to make sure your children obey the rules and grow up to be a productive uh, woman or man in society, you still have to be fun. You know what I mean? Not like be their best friend because I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. Now, when we older and y'all grown, <laughs> that's a different story. But if you underage, I can be friendly with you, but I'm not about to be your best friend. I'm still your mama, your guardian, your authoritative figure. You know what I'm saying? But you still have to be fun. You have to add fun in your life. Play with your kids. Tease your kids. Joke around with your kids. You know, things like that. But you can't always be strict 100% of the time with your children. But, yeah, you said they can go where they find a lot of love and a safe... Right, right. Exactly. And they would come in the house and they'd be like... I'd be like, okay, you know you can't be ripping and running in my house, right? Yes, ma'am, we know, we know, we not, we not, we promise, we promise, you know, and they, <laughs> they come in or, you know, you know, you're not going to be running through the neighbor's yard, right, around in, at my house. You can't be in the neighbor's yard, right? You stay in this yard, right? Yes, ma'am, we know, we know, Miss Tanya, yep, okay, all right, have fun. <laughs> but, you know, <clears throat> it's, 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 as far as being a, a foster parent, they don't get all that love all the time. They don't get all that uh, tenderness, that concern, that care. You know, because some people, they just can't do that with other people's children. Some people, they just don't have the, they don't have, it's just not in them to be that way with other people's children. Like, if I see somebody else's child get hurt, oh my God, hold up. One time, let me tell you something. One time I drove home from, uh, I can't remember where I was driving home from, from school, maybe from work. And I was on my way home, and my neighbor, who stayed two doors down, she has like three boys. And they were little boys then. They were like, I don't know, they were like seven, eight, nine, or eight, nine, ten. They were stair steps. I remember that. And they were in grade school. And so I was on my way home and I stopped. And because I had seen some other kids jumping them. And I didn't know what was going on. These ain't my kids. But I know they stay on my block. <laughs> I know they stay on my block and they would play with my kids sometimes. So I stopped. I pulled the car over so fast. I mean, I'm surprised I didn't roll up on the curb because I pulled over to the curb so fast. Jumped out of my car and I just started flipping out. Like, what's going on? Y'all jumping them for real? All y'all kids jumping these little kids? Like, really? That This is not about to go down. This is not about to go down. I'm like, okay, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't lay no hands on nobody's kids, but I was basically like, uh, it took all of just a few seconds for them to turn around and walk away. <laughs> and these weren't my kids. And I was like, when you get home, you better tell your mother exactly what happened and have her call to school. And it was like, okay, okay. But I mean, some people, they don't have that in them to care for a child that isn't theirs. For So for you to have that in you, to treat a child just like you would treat your own child and take in kids that aren't yours and provide for them and love them and, you know, give them everything they need and more. I mean, that... You don't want to, like, put foster parents up on a pedestal, like, oh, you deserve an award, you deserve, you know, this, that, oh, you know, congratulations, you know, a pat on the back. But they sh they deserve some recognition because there are a lot of kids out there in foster homes, there are, I mean, in foster care, um, living in group homes, and they have nowhere to go, no family to take care of them, no family that wants them. And for CPS to be called on Sean, that really, really hurt me. That I, I'm, I'm watching this, and then I'm listening to the other people call in and give their stories about how um, people might have done them dirty by calling CPS on them and making false allegations, or people that they know of uh, who, that it was done to them. 
that that is so not the business. That is so not cool. And <clears throat> excuse me. And I, I I think that those people should be punished at the highest degree. At the highest degree. Because again, you not punishing the person that you hate, the person that you don't like. You're not just punishing that parent that you can't get along with for some reason. But to make any kind of false allegations on somebody, whether it was child abuse or anything else that, that's wrong, and to make false allegations, call the police, call CPS, the people who do that should be punished severely. Like, I don't know who did it. I don't know who called. And again, I don't know this man personally, but just from what I can gather from what I have experienced watching him and watching his videos and seeing him around his children, his foster children. And actually one of his foster children, um, <clears throat> he had passed a few years ago and to see him come together every year with his family and his, uh, foster son's friends for his birthday to celebrate his life and to see his tears. It's like, Really? Somebody actually think this man abuses his children? I don't know. I need to... When, when you do stuff like that, you should show proof. You should show proof. If you have proof that somebody is abusing their children, if you have solid proof that somebody is abusing their children, you should go straight to the cops. Why call CPS? So they can come out and do a uh interview or do a um look around the house. Cause somebody who's really abusing their children, <clears throat> they um could, you know, have so much fear in the children, the children gonna sit there and lie. Oh, we good, we cool, ain't nothing happened, we good, we all right, we ate today, we went to school, we came home, we ate again, we all right. You know? But if you have real, real proof that somebody is being abused, you should go to the police. Like, seriously, you should call the cops and you should make a police report and show them the proof. Show them the proof. If you have videotapes, if you have the child um, with you or, or, the, or a conversation of the child, you and the child recorded, or pictures of whipping marks or beating marks or... I mean, if you have no proof, if you have no proof, if you somebody who really, really, you're not calling CPS just out of anger, just to hurt somebody, just to get back at somebody, you're not doing it that way, but you honestly think, if you honestly think that somebody is being abusive to their child, whether it's a foster child, whether it's a real child, whether it's the neighbor child, whether it's, you know, whoever child it is, if you have real proof, you should go to the law. Go to the law. Why call CPS? Because usually when you call CPS, they're going to get there when they can get there. If a child <clears throat> is honestly, you think, being abused and their life is in danger, you need to go to the cops immediately and say, somebody, go get that child. If you really believe that, if you really believe that, but for the ones who's just doing it just out of anger, just out of spite, just to get back at somebody because you don't like them or because they done something to you and you think, oh, okay, I know what, I know where to hit them. I know where to hit them. I will hit them where it hurts with their kids. Not only could they probably go to jail for false allegations, but they can lose their kids and ain't no telling where them kids going to go. And the person who called on them is not going to keep those kids and not going to take care of those kids. So, <clears throat> again, I think they should be punished to the highest degree of the law. I really, really do. You said some people are in it just for a check. And you're right, Ann. Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right. Some people are in it for the check. Um, and you can really tell, like, who's in it for the check. You can tell. Because people, I, I'm, I'm a good reader. I'm a good reader of people. I can tell when people are really genuine. I can tell when people really care about you, when people are really sincere. 
And them is the only kind of people that I want to be around. I don't, I don't like being around nobody who's shady or they, you know, they swing whichever way the wind blows. You, you know. <laughs> oh, uh-uh. Nope, nope. <laughs> I, I try to hang around people that I know are trustworthy. Um, I can depend on them. I can rely on them. And people who I think got my back. Those are the kind of people that I would hang around with. If I thought anybody I hung around was a child abuser, all ha first of all, we wouldn't even be hanging around with each other. And if I think you just um, getting a check for a kid just because you want the money, I'm going to holler at you. Like, that's, that's wrong. That's really wrong. If you need more money, get another job. Don't just be taking in no kids just because you want to check and you really don't care about the kids. I mean, kids are so much more valuable than a check. So I, I think that's wrong, but you're right. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people in this world that only takes in kids for checks. And some people take in kids too many. Sure, they can barely fit them in their house. Barely got enough beds to put them in. And they'll, sure, I'll take another one. <laughs> I'll take another one just so they can get more and more money. But it, it's wrong either way. Either way, if you don't really care about kids, don't take in kids. Don't adopt kids. Don't foster kids. You know, just get you a dog or something. Get you a cat, a gerbil. You, Pet snake. I don't know. <laughs> but don't get nobody else's kids, okay? Leave them right there where they are, and hopefully somebody who really cares about children will... Hey, I think I want to take that child home with me right there. Sure. You know. But... That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. I just saw that video, and I, my heart was just like, are you serious? And then he's, he didn't even have, like, his children online. He didn't even have his children. Like, one, there was one video where his son was on live with us for, like, an hour by himself. Sean was doing something else, cooking or doing something. It was around the holidays. And I think he was prepping for Thanksgiving or Christmas, something like that. And his son was on the live with us. And people were asking him questions. How, what's it like living with Sean? What, you know, just all kind of stuff. And the man, you can tell the child was being sincere. I mean, he was grown. He was grown. So this is a grown man. So it wasn't like it was a little child that was being manipulated. You know, you better tell them something good on the live. You know, <laughs> it was a grown, a grown man telling about his experience living with his foster dad. And I saw that video and I was like, man, that is, that's wonderful because Sean isn't married. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a, and he's a man. And how many men do you know that fosters three, four kids, you know, at a time and takes care of them all and loves them all and, you know, gives them everything that they need that they never had. I mean, it's not every day for a man, a single man, to do that. It, that's not an everyday thing. So, you know, I gave him his props for that. I really do. But I was just... I, mm. And to hear those other callers call in and talk about their experiences... Man, I was like, oh my God, if one more caller come in, uh, I ain't gonna have no more tears left to cry. I, and maybe I was affected. Maybe some people didn't receive the same effect um, that I did. You know, somebody else who watched the video could have been like, uh, you know, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not a softie. <laughs> I'm not a softie, but when it comes to kids and when it comes to things like that, you know, it really breaks my heart to see a child who is really being abused. That breaks my heart. But it also, you know, stings when somebody makes false allegations against somebody else, you know, to say that they're abusing children. So, you know, if... It... <sighs> okay, please. Let's not do Jesse Smollett. Please. Let's not do a Jesse. 
you can go to jail for that. You can get in trouble for that. Even though you're trying to hurt that person, you're also hurting the children. Remember that. You are also hurting the children who are living in good homes where they feel safe, protected, secure, and loved. And that's all I have to say on the issue. That's all I have to say. You said, sorry, trying to cook. That's okay. That's okay. We going to have to hook up pretty soon. I know we've been getting hit with all this snow and we've been getting hit with so much snow. Like today, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I was not ready. I was like, why did I go to work? Why did I go to work? When I got to work today, because you know, only work there part time a couple days a week. I got to work today, and they said, uh, what? You here? I said, what you mean? I I'm supposed to be here. Am I not? <laughs> Has there been a change of plans and y'all don't need me? They was like, no, we just thought, you know, because of the weather forecast. I said, well, when I came in, I mean, it was a few, it was, snow it was snowing, but it wasn't like after an hour of being at work, I looked out the windows, and I was like, oh, my God, why did I come to work? I was like, oh, my God. And so then the time just kept passing and passing. And I was like, I I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here. Ain't nobody coming up in here because, you know, I work at a nursing home. No visitors are coming. Um, no families are coming it's a blizzard outside. You can't see. I mean, snow is blowing everywhere. The snow is just coming and coming and coming and coming. And I was like, forget that. Pick up that phone. Do, 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 do. Call the administrator. Um, um, see, what had happened was <laughs> I should have stayed home. But I made it here. But I'm about to leave. <laughs> She, she was like, you can leave right now if you want. I'm like, thank you for your confirmation. I was leaving anyway. <laughs> I was leaving anyway. So, anywho, I made it home. It took me over an hour to get home. We got stuck. It was pitch black in certain areas. The power was out. I just pray nobody gets stranded out in this weather because it is... It is so bad outside, y'all. It is so bad here outside in Omaha. It, I can't even describe how bad it is out here. But, whew, it is very bad. Yes, it is very bad. But anywho, y'all, I'm about to get off this live because Miss Gina, Queen of Talk, y'all need to subscribe to her channel, by the way. Miss Gina, Queen of Talk, um, she's about to... Uh, have a live tonight on her extraordinary channel. Extraordinary. X, 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 extraordinary. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to put the link in here. Hold on. Let me find her channel. We about to be talking about some grown folks stuff. Let me uh, find a link to her channel. Because I'm going to put it in uh, the chat. And y'all can click on the link and y'all can subscribe to her channel. There you go. I just put in her link. So she's going to go live in a little while. We're going to, you know, talk, have, have some fun, talk grown folks stuff. Get your drink together. We're going to talk about relationships and all that kind of stuff. So I just put her link in. Click on that link. Click subscribe to her channel. And make sure you hit the bell. Make sure you hit the bell so you get the notifications. And also, again... My other channel um, is this basically the same name as, or the yeah the same name as this channel that I'm on right now, but it just doesn't have the word live in it. So I'm gonna again put the link to my other channel on there because sometimes I upload videos on that channel that I don't upload on this channel. So this channel that I'm on right now is like my live channel where I do my lives. But sometimes on my other channel, I upload, you know, videos too. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put, let's see, my other YouTube channel is, 
Okay, so I put the link in there to my other YouTube channel. So make sure y'all go over there too and make sure y'all uh, press subscribe and then click the bell so you can get the notifications. And um, y'all be safe out there. I know Omaha is not the only one getting hit tonight with snow or getting hit today this weekend with snow. So no matter where you are, if you are having bad weather, I will keep you guys in my prayers because I'm telling you, when I got home today, I literally kissed the ground like, Mwah. <laughs> I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, sweet little baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothing while lying in a manger. Thank you for making sure we got home safe and sound. So anywho, anywho, let's see what you say. Oh. I thought I saw another comment. My bad. But anywho, you guys, yes. Please um, check out Miss Gina's other channel. And please uh, subscribe to my other channel. I put the links in the chat. And in the meantime, in, the, in between time, prime time squad, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.